Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. <clears throat> Let me just. Uh, why not? Because we can talk about a couple of things before the Clarkinator jumps in, and then we can jump back into this. So, uh, oh, because it's going to echo. <sighs> All right. Well, I'll just repeat the questions when you ask them and stuff. So yesterday, just for you guys at home, if you're following along or like to follow along with what I'm doing in the, this main crew over here at the O'Hearn Castle, we are on power bodybuilding started today. Um, is Clark already in? Okay. Uh, just that, guys. I'm just letting them know. Why are you live? Is this live? Is this? So I'm, I'm guessing somebody goes. I, they do that sometimes. They go, hey, guys, these, this is what filmed earlier. He's not answering questions. Yeah. Actually, this is live. <laughs> I want to jump on and just kind of give an update. Because I know some people out there uh, going through whatever program they are, they like to do it with others. And so I want to let everybody know that for me, I am jumping on power bodybuilding. We started today. And I will be slowly reversing out of the the diet. I got one for you. Go. Can somebody tell me why Mike always says he doesn't do cardio, but every time he's live, he's fucking doing cardio? Okay. I'll that. give that person $10,000. $10,000. <laughs> and this is live, so you can keep this and take me to court. $10,000 to you, my friend, where you show me where I say I never do cardio. I'll take him to court right now. <laughs> take him to court. <laughs> Ten, all right, right that video. Good See, luck. This is, the, this is the problem. You say something, and you give them an outline of what to do, and then they just take one sentence. So this guy's – there's probably very little common sense with this person. And the problem with that is this. Hey – so, Clarky, people don't have common sense. No, people don't have. So, somebody said, "Hey, why did Mike say?" Which Mike never, ever said, "Don't ever do cardio." Never said. I said, "Use it when you need to to get ready for your stage performance, your class reunion, your wedding, your summer vacation. Use it as a tool." Not as some kind of crutch that you do all year, because <clears throat> like we all know, what's that? Oh, yeah, that's that's true. They got to make videos and take one sentence and then take up, leave out the rest of the stuff. So the point is, somebody just says, and it's like uh, the, the call, what is it? Dog whistle, the yeah, clickbait. clickbait. Somebody yeah. must have said or took a portion of what I said, and then these people take it for which 100% instead of real watching the video and talking through it. So, yeah, yeah so $10,000 to this guy to show me any video where I said Michael Hearn never does cardio. Yeah. Hi, Clark. Hello. Hi. So, um, I wanted to find out which program you're doing. Um, are you changing up anything? What's the next step for you? And I want to go over percentage of intensity on the second thing. Yeah. Because I changed my program. I'll tell you about the diet that I'm switching over to. Um, and the training changed back to power bodybuilding. Yeah. So my style is more instinctive. I just kind of listen to my body as it relates to when I need to do cardio, if I need to cut back or add carbohydrates. So I'm very in tune with 
my body and understand exactly what I need when I need it. And I'm able to manage how I look. That's ultimately what I want to do is manage how I look. So I can take off my shirt anywhere, anytime and be ready for all of those things that you listed off, whether it's a reunion. You know right or, now you can take the shirt off. They're asking yeah. for you. Everybody in the house is asking you to take the, I'll, I'll give a little cleavage though. I'll give a little, <laughs> little chest. It. What's going on? Look at that. Is that hair under there? That ain't hair. Wow. It's a bad spray tan, though. Yeah, I see it ends right there at your cleavage line. <laughs> yeah. Like they taped your head off. Yeah, it's like, ah, you missed the whole spot. But remember, inclines don't work your upper chest. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah right? Okay, so you're instinctive, but how does that help the person out there that's trying to follow along with you at the same time? Because I find that my Titan crews and the people around the world love kind of doing what I do. And I love that they do that because I get motivated off of them doing the same programs. And so we started power bodybuilding now and reversing out of this diet. Yeah. Well, you know, an exercise is an exercise. It really is just modifying it to your needs specifically. So if you're showing someone one of your exercises that you that you do that work well for you. People have to find where it works well for them. They could do the same thing. Like somebody was arguing uh -huh. with me the other day about overhead extensions and the, you know, in our video that I did, and I'm like, you're just, you're stupid. You're saying stupid things based upon some research that you say you read about overhead extensions are not good for X, Y, or Z. And I'm like, how can anyone tell me what's good for me or tell me what's bad for me? We can guide people and they can do exactly what you're doing, but with those little slight modifications that make it good for them. Like I'm the perfect example. Real quick. The reason why he says people really can't tell Clark is Clark is a proven entity. He has now trained for over 40 years intensely more than that but to a level i mean 40 years when i talk about clark i'm talking about at that start point he was already in the magazines he was already winning shows he was already that guy so 40 years of being at the pinnacle of the health and fitness and you can't argue it's like saying uh bill gates doesn't know much and can't make money it's like <laughs> stop he's already made billions so this is an unarguable question Hey, turn your camera sideways, would you? Yeah, I'm, I've got a doctor appointment I'm checking in here for. I've got to check in 15 minutes early, so I'm All waiting. Right. Okay, so All here right. we go. I'm, I'm, I'm both, so I'm looking here and talking here. Gotcha. So that's why Clark is saying don't argue with him when he's doing an exercise. So just for you viewers, I had to give you a backstory on why it's not arguable for Clark to do these. Yeah. Now listen me, to what it says about you guys doing them. So that's where I want to get you to personally, as far as being instinctive, you have to just kind of work it little by little and find out where it works well for you. It could be a tweak of your elbow from here to here. Like this might not work for you, but this might based upon some shoulder issue that you have. So we can all do the same thing, but these understanding of our body is really to me, what has served me the best over the years is, is knowing. And did you always know this or did you try it how the books tell you to try it? And then you found what happened? What, what was the involved? How did you go from point A to point B? Where did you, how did you get here? Just for those viewers. Just sticking with it every day and doing it, doing wrong things and doing right things and then finding, okay, you know, the biggest thing for me, honestly, in my life period has been, been this understanding of I don't need to do what the world thinks I need to do. I need to do what I know works well for me. So we're taught certain things and there, there's definitely boundaries that we need to stay in, especially with lifting weights. So we don't hurt ourselves. But within that, there are ways to manipulate everything, our diet, our exercise, our workout splits, all of that sort of stuff to get it to where it suits us right. I mean, you talk about guys back in the day that did one set to failure. Would you ever do that? No, <laughs> you know? So that being said, did you start early Clark, early Clark picking up the dumbbells for those novice people out there? And I'll call novice people uh, year one to year 10. 
you're still novice after 10 years of training. So for you guys, did you start dumbbell curls and straight bar curls doing it like the magazines and then evolve into others? Yeah, I mean, I would look at the magazines and try and emulate what the people who had success were doing because, you know, the old saying, success leaves clues. And the clues that are left with success is a body like yours. So someone looks at a body like yours, obviously you've done things and you figured things out and you understand how it works and you can teach that to other people. So the Power Bodybuilding Program is a great example of Follow me in this, do your tweaks to make it work for you. But this is the general guideline to get you to where you want to go. Like this works. So that's what people need to understand. Success leaves clues. Look at the person that you're following. If they currently don't look the way you want to look or the ideal body in your mind, then they're probably not someone you want to follow because they're going off of what worked in the past. We need to do what works now. <laughs> hey, uh, Jeffrey, when we were talking earlier, before I went live, we were talking about somebody at the time was in their twenties and they looked good. And then they lost it by the time they hit 30. Who was that? I'm trying to remember. If you remember the name, let me know what we were talking about. There's a whole list of them. <laughs> yeah. But, but I think what I want the viewers to understand is <sighs> We can all train like animals as teens, you know, and I recommend training like an animal. And I know we only got about eight minutes with Clark, if that, but you get to your twenties, you can still do that through your twenties. If you're eating right, what I don't think they understand is weightlifting can help you last a lifetime, but incorrect weightlifting could finish you by 30, 35. And I don't think they understand doing something completely wrong over and over again does hurt you and it doesn't strengthen you. So oh, we're yeah. just talking about that. Is, is there things Practice that you know? doesn't make perfect. That's an old saying that we have that's completely out of context. Practice doesn't make perfect. We could practice two plus two equals five on a chalkboard for the entire classroom period. Two plus two equals five. Two plus two equals five. Will it ever equal five? No, but you practiced it all day long. So yeah. if you practice doing an exercise wrong, if you practice a diet that doesn't work for you, if you practice a mindset thing that doesn't align with who you are, it is not going to serve you than if you practiced in a way that does serve you. So that's the point of really getting to know your body. What is going to, what is going to serve you? That's going to be something for longevity. I want to share a book with you. My, actually, it's not a book, Mike. It's a series of lectures, this doctor talking about longevity. And I think about you every time I listen to it when I'm in the gym, because it's exactly what you and I are going after. We're going after having like the top of the line physique, but for as long as possible, you're not going to stop at 52. You're going to be at 72. You're going to be on there if it's your time in your training to be on there. If it's not, you won't be on there and you'll be saying, I'm not doing cardio right now because my goal isn't two. And that's what people don't get. That's where they take it out of context. And that's yeah. where the ignorance comes into this thing. It's like people try and misquote me. And I'm like, that's not what I said. I didn't say that at all. I never said TRT was bad. I said it's not for me because I'm not ready to start that slippery slope yet. But when I do need it, I'm going to be the first one in line, but I'm going to be doing it with the best person possible, not some random person that doesn't know what they're talking about. So someone will take that out of context. Clark thinks TRT is bad. When did I ever say that? Please, I'll give you $10,000 if you find me saying that anywhere. You won't. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will double that so it is twenty thousand dollars if you can find somewhere where he or I said it's the dumbest thing in the world to do. So again, it's nothing that we it's we believe and I recommend clients to get on TRT when there's something going on with their body and they're not producing and they're decaying away and something like TRT can help them. I'm the first guy that says, we need extra blood work that we did last time. Go back, do it again. Make sure you're right. 
here, I'm going to introduce you to these people. Go start this process. And I think that goes along with how this conversation started was the funny thing about somebody going, Mike said never do cardio. Mike never said that once. Mike said, use it when you need it. Don't do it all year. So that's the funny little change up on these guys. Your beliefs, um, they got to listen to your whole conversations when you talk about this. Uh, as, as nutrition goes now, I know that you are somebody again, fine tuned. Let's remove you from this. Is there any kind of basic step in programs in a sense of how does somebody go from eating healthy to doing something better? And what I mean by that is, you know, people eat healthy, but their bodies don't change because they're not taking in the right calories of this, that, and the other thing to make, create the artwork. Because there's a difference between eating healthy and eating right. Yeah. Uh, is there any, any tips from Clark? In this a lot last of minute? Eating healthy will just have them treading water, right? They're just yeah. barely staying the same. So they eat to stay the same. If you want to have a marked change in the way you look in the mirror, in the dark, in the worst lighting, not in the best, in the most ideal with the situations like, look, and this filter will add a shadow. You have to find the program that is right for you, that is sustainable, that will get you through the times when you have that extra little layer of body fat that's hanging on at the bottom that won't allow you to see those last two or three or four abs that are necessary to dial it in. And that's really what it comes down to. It's easy to lose 10, 20 pounds when you're overweight and you're just maintaining and you start a diet, but it's hard to get to that next level when you're getting down to the the finer points of dialing your physique in. So that's when it comes to getting a coach saying, okay, let's try this and see how it works. Let's look at your pictures. That's really where a coach comes into play. And I have a Mike works in that capacity in my life. And you asked me at the beginning of this, what am I doing differently? You know, what anyone could do differently would be if they really want to make a change and they're disciplined, disciplined, they could do your 30 day blitz. (laughs) That'll change anybody. I don't care who you are. That will create a change in your body. It's 30 days. And you're like, well, I can do it. Well, I would, I would encourage you to think about it, pray about it, meditate about it before you approach Mike with the, the hands up saying I'm ready to go because it's not easy. Most people won't make it. All right. Pause for a reason. Most people won't make it. But if you do make it, I promise you, you will see a difference, not only in the way you look in the mirror and the dark and the light and the best light and the worst light. You will see a difference in how you show up in life because you will have proved to yourself, wow, I'm more disciplined than I thought. Never did I think I could do two hours of cardio, two workouts, 500 crunches in a day. But somehow I managed to do it because it was that important to me to accomplish something that I told myself wasn't possible. That's really, to me, more about the 30-day blitz than anything else. It's getting through the stuff that you have put in front of you saying, I can't, I won't, oh, there's a holiday. So what? It's just food. Just eat. You're going to eat more food than you've ever eaten in your entire life. And so it's not what you think. And and I promise you, you'll probably get better results than you could even imagine right now. So that is our boy, Clark Bartram, coming in with the knowledge. End of the day, I hope you took away the point of how you approach something and what you're saying in your mind. If you listen to him carefully, he's saying... Change it from the aspect of I have to go to the gym and train to I get to go lift and train. I get to feed my body correctly to grow. Clark Bartram, thank you so much for hanging. If you get done, hit us back, all right? All righty. Peace. Love you, kid. Bye-bye. Love you. So love that. Love that. Okay, so again, guys, you got to listen all the way through to anything that there's, and I know that most people's uh, attention span doesn't stay there that long or they just read a caption or something and then they've made up their opinion on what we're talking about and that's not what we got that's not what we want you guys to do especially going forward on this new diet we finished up yesterday i'm putting a new plan together and i'll do a video 
just talking about the nutrition and what I'm doing. Again, I'm going back to a, a fun one in a sense because I get to go back into feeding both, both types of proteins that both feed the muscle, yes, but also, also that connective tissue. So that gets stronger and refeed that, refeed those other things besides the muscles, the healthiness to the skin, the healthiness to the joints and ligaments, the healthiness to your body um, with some oils, some extra nutrition and proteins that feed the body in a different way than just basically trying to feed your muscle. And I think a lot of you guys that are working through injuries, this is gonna help you. A lot of you, uh, People with illnesses, skin problems, um, heart problems, anything like that, uh, this is going to be the focus. And again, I'll go over the nutrition on a different day, but you'll be seeing me doing my meals now this next four weeks. So kind of pay attention to why I'm doing what I'm doing and the mixture of the foods I'm doing. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And then also Serge is... Uh, really coming to another, another level with his greatness and artwork is showing you guys on the stories. And those will be over on Instagram, Natty Sups, Power Bodybuilding, and Michael Hearn. Also watch what Mona's doing on this next level. If this doesn't turn you on in a sense of going, hey, that's what I wanna do. Um, if it is just wanting to put on strength and size, then Watch Mona and how she's feeding and the rest of the crew um, because they are going for strength. You'll see Doc getting really, really strong. Uh, we got any questions where I can answer, Jeffrey? You want to jump back on there? Yeah, we got a couple. Uh, bam. What is the optimal program to bench press more? Well, I would just incorporate in the correct exercises for your secondaries. Um, also make sure that you're spacing out the workouts in enough time to recover the nervous system and go. And then again, at this point, you're gonna go volume to really get that bench press up, but incorporate all those great exercises, you know, the uh, block press, the high necks, um, more declines in if you're trying to do bench press uh, and change it, change it. And then also you already know, the rep range from that start go in the pyramids take it all the way through on the pyramids because you're going to be surprised when you're doing that and you're adding the rep and the set woof that changes your workout but thanks great question look at that look at that beast right there Serge making a cameo Bam. do you think it's a good idea to do a permanent carnivore slash keto diet Seven months and lost 50 pounds, but eventually will it be possible to fall in keto? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think I've never heard of one diet working forever. So I, I, I think that's confusing to me. Um, are you diabetic? Uh, is that why the, that diet? Um, so let me know that at this point. Are you diabetic? And so you're, you've, and then how old you are as well. That also goes into play. And then I would make sure when you find out or when people state, now this may not be you. So understand, I'm not talking about you, but a lot of times people will say things like, I lost 60 pounds, but when they lost 60 pounds, it's a, it's a huge combination of the muscle and the fat which again, you want to minimize as much, but you will lose muscle, but you want to minimize as much as you can and try to retain that muscle. So it goes into play on, can you keep changing or can you bulk up? It depends on the training along with it though. It's not just the nutrition. So how are you training to bulk up? How are you going to switch from what you're doing? And then again, a lot of people can get you in shape, you know? So like, you just changed your diet and you're getting in shape. You lost 60 pounds. That's awesome. You have no idea how hard that is. I mean, you do, but society doesn't. And so big hats off to you. Great job so far. But again, 
how you get in shape is how you maintain that shape. So be, be smart about that as you reverse, if you're gonna start reversing out to put on size. So goes back to the very first question the guy said, if you to get in shape, you were doing an hour of cardio for the last six months, you're doing carnivore and it's low calories. You're at like 1500 calories, an hour of cardio training six days a week. Well, that's how you got in, you dropped the weight. Now you have to stay with that to maintain it. Because if you stop any of that, you're gonna start blowing up. Just by stopping it, you're gonna blow up. Because your body's now needs that stuff as you diet it down. So be smart, make sure you reverse off of that stuff smartly. Um, and that's another reason going back to the, that first statement is that's why you use cardio as a tool instead of a lifestyle. Cardio should be a tool. Weightlifting should be a lifestyle because weightlifting is something you got to continuously do to keep your body strong, healthy, and burn calories and build muscle. He is diabetic, right? And how old is he? 29? Oh, okay. So you dropped 60 pounds and you're stronger. That's awesome, man. Um, congrats. Very few. I've never heard anybody say they were stronger as they lose 60 pounds. So big props to you, man. Again, another hats off. Congratulations. Keep doing what you're doing. Sounds like you got this worked out pretty well. And especially if you're getting stronger. Nice. My boy's consistent right there. You guys don't know. Man has a goal. He's always had a goal in mind. And that's what keeping him on point. And so you guys can take from him right here, AJ, is that he has a great goal and to kind of live his passion and his life that he wants. So that's a great one, man. Good job, bud. Thank you for the donation for the pups. I appreciate that. Uh, how often do you cycle your diet? Is there a period of time you want to stay on a particular diet to allow the body to adapt to what you are eating? <sighs> great. Great terminology of what you said. So you kind of understand this. So there's no time that you stay on the same diet for a long period of time because your body adapts within 10 to 14 days. So it always has to slightly change. And so it doesn't matter if you're putting on size or taking off size. The person that stayed on the same diet for two months has already hit that plateau. And now the body has to get kickstarted again. So my recommendation, and for me, is mine changes every two weeks. And that's why the tight meal plan is perfect, because it's already ahead of you when you put your numbers in. So you put down your weight, you put your age down, all those things, and then it goes off what you previously had and what you need to go and what that goal is. So it's a great thing to do. But uh, the way everybody that's reading this, see what he said, though? It's, it's great. He understands this. Great questions today. Yeah. My recommendation is every two weeks that thing changes. And that's why in the Titan crew, we always do those check-ins. Um, and also when we do hardcore diets, then that changes every week. So you'll see if you're doing things right, your body changes. It changes within two weeks. You'll notice, hey, this is working. This isn't working. And those are really good points for you guys to self-coaching yourself thanks for the question man hats off again man three home runs today what do you got for me yeah you can go basic and also whatever you guys are doing right now if there's any titan crew members on here remember i put a check-in in so make sure to go over Put your pictures down, answer all the 20 questions I have for you, and make sure the email's there as well. Just because we're double checking, making sure everybody that's in there is current and still working on the Titans uh, as a group. Okay. Right. What workouts would you recommend for weight loss? Oh. 
Well, five, 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 I don't know what that is. Is it five by five? Yeah, yeah five by five is a, that's always that power bodybuilding. That's a size strength. Um, upper and lower, push and pull, two parts a day. Those are all great ones. My recommendation is uh, <clears throat> always be pick one that you're not doing and start with that and make sure you set that up. But you know this. I mean, if you're going to try to slice and dice, <clears throat> I got 12 programs all for slicing and dicing. And it more matters. <clears throat> well, it doesn't more matter. They both go together but the nutrition along with the training. And then again, you know this, the training's got to go up at the end of the, the weeks. Like let's say you're going to diet for eight weeks or 12 weeks. And you can answer this for me. We'll be on here for a bit. Um, but if your diet's going to be 12 weeks, obviously that last four weeks, you're going to be wanting to make sure that you have room to get even more in. And then relative to the first four weeks, you know, you got to build, 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 build. So the first one right out the door, make sure it's something different than you're doing. That way your body's not used to it. And then you have room to push more. Thanks for the question, man. Uh, yeah, we have, we have four people with the same yeah. Hashimoto. Um, yeah, we have four people in the Titan crew that all have that as well. And they're doing really great on the Titan meal plan, um, specifically for them and their nutrition. And again, it's the breakdown of asking the right question, answering through all the questions I ask, what is going on with her and what she can and can't do. And then program wise, again, you guys know this, mostly with this training to the point where you're getting better, but you're not breaking down the body to such an extreme that you can't recover. Thanks for the question. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've dealt with that, that issue with thousands of people through the years, believe it or not. It's a very, even though they say it's not very common, it's a pretty common one in health and fitness because um, those issues, again, it goes back to those issues. All right. Next one. Hats off to you. Way to support the wife, too, man. Uh, 22 year old, six foot, two ten, trying to bulk up. When you track calories at that age, I'm just trying to get as much muscle as possible and not worry too much about fat as the metabolism is crazy. Rich. Love this kid. Holy cow. Good job. For all you guys in your teens and in your early 20s, this kid's doing the right approach. And the reason why you don't need to worry about the fat. It's because it's hard to gain muscle. It's really hard. And so those calorie intake is you can do a one to three ratio. For every one pound of muscle you gain, it's okay that you gain three pounds of fat. And the reason why is it's hard, really hard to gain muscle. It's simple to get rid of fat. Um, and that's why you want those calories in a good place to where you're putting on the weight, you're getting stronger, and you make sure you're stronger. But to answer your question, <clears throat> I was right around 7,000 calories from the time I was 15 and going into the powerlifting meets, um, winning those and getting ready for Teenage Nationals at 17. Uh, obviously, before the show, I broke down and lowered the calorie intake to get sliced and walk on stage. Um, but again, to tell you what calories to do, I can't because I don't know how freak because here's the one problem. I can't, I don't know you. All you're doing is giving me body weight and height. I know a lot of guys that could win the Mr. Olympia at six foot, 210 pounds. Um, so, but I also know a lot of guys that don't work out, don't train, don't do anything at six, one, two, 15. So the weight and height doesn't matter to me so much as how much you're training what your body looks like right now, half the calories you're taking right now. Cause there's a, another thing is just cause you shove the calories in doesn't mean for you specifically that your body's going to utilize those calories. Cause you got to remember 
not every guy your height and your weight utilizes calories the same. As much as people would like to say they do, they don't. Nowhere in the same ballpark do they. So that's, that's the bad thing about so many people saying, oh, if you're this height, this weight, this weight you should do. But you're a 210, is that what it says? Jeffrey? How, to, how, how heavy is he? Yeah, so make sure you're right around that 300 protein. Or technically, whatever your protein intake you're taking right now, you know, play with that and try to get up to that 300. And then depending on how much carbs you're doing right now and how much you're utilizing, play with that. Again, every 10 days to 14 days, you'll know what to do. Take them up or bring them down. The main thing I want you to do, though, is off your calories. And this is a tough one for you because you're 22. And it was really tough for me. Um, I'm glad I did it the way I did it, which wasn't the smartest way, but it created a mindset. But for you, are you recovering fully? Are you getting stronger week by week? Those are great gauges on if you're taking in the right calories, you're recovering enough. And your calories could be right, technically, even if you're not getting stronger. What could be happening is you're training too hard and too much. And so maybe you got to back off there. So there's so many facets to it. But just listen to your body. Great question. And I'm glad the biggest point here is I'm glad at 22, this is your time to put on that size. So I always talk about um, being 275, 272 to be precise at 15. And I knew that from the age of 11 and 12 that I only had a certain amount of time to put that size on. And so when I got to 272, I knew that at that point I needed to slow down a bit. That was plenty big enough and just fine tune it and keep fine tuning it and fine tuning it. So the calories didn't go up or down uh, dramatically. It was small moves just to make sure that that 272 got fine tuned. And that's why I got to be able to carry that body weight throughout my entire life. Great question. Great mindset, kid. Uh, get your butt in the Titan crew. I want to see if we can't create a monster here. All right, another question, please. You guys know about reversing out of diets, right? That's a little something. I want you guys to make sure. Hey, Jeff, can I lock this one down here? Uh, you used this uh, holder for the uh, camera, right? Okay. Sergi, afterwards, let's lock this camera down here. You guys got some time here. We're going to answer these questions fully. So I'm guessing you don't know me. Uh, cardio should only be performed when you're getting ready for a show, a competition, or whatever that goal may be. Um, so that's when you use the cardio. Remember that, okay? For anybody that's on here that does cardio all year, you got to do some kind of research for yourself. Because I think just going off of what somebody says is the worst thing. <clears throat> you just kind of listening to somebody going, I'm taking their advice. They said this, they said that. Go do the research about diminishing returns. Diminishing returns means if you do something over and over for a long period of time, its benefits drop and they drop dramatically. So for the guy that starts January 1st for an hour of cardio, by December, the, he doesn't get the same benefits, not even close. And so what he has to do is he has to take it up even more. So what you guys do, unless you're doing this for a hobby, or we had somebody on yesterday that just loves their meditation, and that's their meditation. But they're also intelligent enough to know how to play with their food. So just remember, diminishing returns, uh, my recommendation for anybody is um, if you're that unhealthy that you have to do cardio every day, man, you got to change your lifestyle. You got to change your lifestyle. That's, that's painful to hear 
think about this. Think about all the people. You know, they always talk about like the Midwest people, these 300, 400 pound people, which I hate that they say Midwest, but it's everywhere, I think. Anyways, you got these new TV shows of these people that are so overweight, never do cardio, and they still live to 70 and 80 years old. So for you intelligent people, you should, you should kind of comprehend that the body is an amazing thing. Now, again, everybody's different. We just had a couple people out here in Hollywood, 23 years old, 29 years old, both passed away. So again, life is delicate and things can happen, but it is an amazing, amazing, powerful thing, your body. And if you treat it well and just give it a little bit, you're pretty darn healthy. Just think about all the people that don't exercise. All they do is sit on the couches and eat pizza every day and they still live these long lives. But on the other hand, you get people out there saying, you got to do this. You got to go out. You got to run three miles a day to stay healthy. Your heart's the most powerful thing in the world. What you do need to do is get your blood work done, get the weight training in, and then in three months, get your blood work done again. See what's going on. See what's happening to the body. It's a beautiful thing. But don't use every little, don't work out cardio, diet all year long. You cannot stay at the peak of the mountain. I cannot wait until Jeffrey finishes this video. We have a three-part series of sitting down with Frank Zane. And we talked about all these things. And you'll be so surprised on, I don't think, I think you common sense people realize his answers, but it's it's great to see things confirmed and beliefs. Uh, he's 80, looks incredible, superhero. But again, a three-part series with me and Frank Zane and Clark Bartram. Next question, what do you got? Oh, you're like me, man. You're like me. You know, it's, it's, yeah. My recommendation is find out what is wrong with the elbow. Um, the things that we're finding out even more with good massage therapists, opening up the fascia, uh, to PRP, to stem cell, um, to movement and range of motion, warming up in different ways or different angles to work around that to force blood because you really want to force blood into an injury because the blood heals it. So those are my recommendations for anybody that has mostly minor things. If you're not going to jump on the PRP and take care of and armor your body, then you really don't love exercising. Sorry. I'm really sorry to say that, but that's the truth. And I wish I maybe even started that stuff younger. Um, so yeah, check that out, PRP, uh, but before that, you know, get the MRI. You got insurance, check out what's going on. What's it, is it bursitis, is it tennis elbow? What you got going? And then start making the steps to heal it. But the one thing that's not gonna heal it is just stopping. You gotta kind of keep moving through it, just in a safer position for the time being until you figure out what's going on there or it strengthens up and heals. Thanks. Thanks for that question. Great question again. You guys are crushing today. I love it. Next. And also PRP for any age. The Dr. Goswami that we talked to, it's so cool to see these kids, you know, college athletes that really want to be pros going in there at 20, 21 years old, CrossFitters going in there. Um, he just had a girl, a soccer player, went in there at 17. So it's a look into it, get moving on it. Good questions, guys, good questions. And just kind of going on what we talked about, if you're just new to this live, we're starting Power Bodybuilding. It's over on the stories. If you want to ride with me, we're going to go eight weeks 
Um, and I am uh, going to show you some modifications that I'm going to do for you guys. So I'm basically calling it a mini power bodybuilding, even though it's a more advanced power bodybuilding. <clears throat> nutrition, again, the nutrition is feeding. It's the right proteins. So you guys know that proteins are going to heal the body, like we are just talking about somebody with an elbow, is that you got to take in the right proteins, not just for your body and the muscle, but your joints and ligaments. Everything in your body heals and grows right so let's feed it correctly and the split is a 60 40 split on those proteins <clears throat> i'm going to do a 50 50 because i have time to reverse out of this and we put that together yesterday so i'm really excited about that and that's where you got your titan meal plan and on the check-ins what i'll do then is I'll look to see how you're eating, what you're eating, and also what's going on with your body. Because it's not just let's change your body, let's change the inside of the body as well. I think it's a really important thing to do. Uh, you will be at the Olympia? I will be. I will be at the Olympia. Um, so the Titan booth will be there. I'm excited to see you. I'll also be doing a lecture at the muscle and fitness booth. So I cannot say, wait to see everybody. Um, and then I will be doing a, a celebration feast that weekend at uh, Bagel Mania. So really excited about that as well. <sighs> That's gonna be fun. Sorry, one second. Say it again. Uh, what are the most important things for training longevity? Uh, food. Yeah, if you say what's the number one thing, uh, obviously it's, I think you guys, because here's another aspect that we just talked about and you might be new to the feed right now, but as much as you hear Weightlifting is longevity. Weightlifting can actually shorten it if done incorrectly. So, you know, I, I hear, for me, I hear a lot. Hey, Mike, I've been consistent <clears throat> just as long as you have. And it's like, okay, great. That's awesome to hear that somebody's getting in there. Now, what could be happening is they're building some muscle and at least their body is strong. But I do hear over and over again, especially for the guys that have been training just half the time I have, maybe 25 years, is that their ligaments, their joints hurt, bad shoulders, bad knees, bad back. And so that makes me think they weren't lifting correctly. And again, it's not about consistency. It's about doing things right day in and day out. But thanks for the question. I know it's a very broad question to answer, but food's number one. <clears throat> and don't destroy your body as you're trying to live longer. So you'll see that a lot with these guys that were in shape in their 30s. You know, you guys all know those kind of guys. They'll post up their photos of what they look like in their 20s and 30s and go. And they're also the guys just, if I'm at the store, I look like you. When I was younger, not realizing the guy and me are the same age. And the point there is that most should look good in your 20s and 30s. The intelligent guy is going to be able to maintain and change to where he's still good in his late 30s, 40s, 50s, and so on. Like Clark, almost 60. Frank Zane, 80. Robbie Robinson. We almost trained with Robbie today. Jeff did something wrong or something, didn't make it happen, but we'll do it back or legs. <clears throat> so just make sure you're doing it right. And when I say food, again, it's me saying food. And so it's not just eating healthy, but it's eating right for what you need to do. 
and prevent. Okay, next one, please. Time for three more questions. Does it walk for weight loss? Well, I think it helps for healthiness. And it'll actually just use up the calories you just ate. But then my question would be, um, there's so many facets to that. I could say sure, because you're exercising, but it depends on your diet, you know what I mean? So are you eating a pizza and then going for a walk? Or are you eating your sweet potatoes and six ounces of red meat, taking your aminos um, in between every two hours and having your other meal, training with weights? And so the problem with the walk thing is you're going to eat what? <laughs> to be healthy three times a week, to change your body. Five, I'm sorry, not three times a week, three times a day. To be healthy, to change your body, you're eating five times a day, right? Five or six. So you're going to go for a walk six times a day. Then that kind of throws me. And I know that that's a big thing right now about the walks. My recommendation is, can you do that? And then you're also saying that you're going to do that for the next 40, 50, 60 years. I just don't have that kind of, I don't have that kind of dedication to where that would be my go-to. But again, maybe what you do is you do the walks. You do it for the next 12 weeks and then find something else to do. Maybe that will get you kick-started. We could think of that way. That's a good way. Glass is half full half full do the walks find out yourself if it works for you do that for the next 12 weeks if it worked for you perfect change it to something else or continue that path whatever you want to do i just think looking for something like that there's something else there's tons of other things that are missing sorry to be that guy to say that but i couldn't think of you know having dinner then going for a walk Having breakfast, instead of going to work, you got to go for a walk first. You're at work, you go eat lunch, and then you got to go for a walk first and go back to the office. It just doesn't make sense to me. Sorry. But it could for you. It could for you. Next. Uh, man, I'm 25 and get jokes out of my gym guys and I use my gym here. Because I got an idea to use the belt and wrap it the sleeve while lifting moderate weight. Moderate weight? Absolutely not. That makes no sense. Yeah, um, yeah. Three to four plates is moderate. Um, yeah, it, it's you're 25, so I'm curious on what is injured on you that you're using those things because I'm assuming it sounds like you want to get strong. It's what I'm reading between the lines. So if you're trying to get stronger, wouldn't that mean the whole body needs to get stronger? Not just your quads, but your ligaments in the knee, your strength in the lower back. Now, here's the thing that people are going to say, well, I'm protecting myself. No, you're actually weakening yourself. So by wearing a belt, mostly at 25, you're already weakening that lower back instead of strengthening it at the weights that you can move with that. Um, same thing with the sleeves on the elbows, wrists, traps, and knees. I would, I would probably be with your friends teasing you. So I'm the guy that's going to tease you on doing that stuff. So take two steps back, go a little less weight that you can manhandle in a great, great form, um, and still then move. And you're going to see how fast you go past whatever you're doing, because those become a crutch, a mental crutch to you. I can't lift four plates. Why? I don't have my belt. That's what's going to happen if you continue to kind of go this route. And your back's going to get weaker and weaker. So remember, you walk with a cane, you develop a limp. Mark Bell said that, and I agree 100%. Um, go for it, Jeffrey. Uh, 
well, in the weightlifting gym, I do weightlifting. Um, and calisthenics, for me, don't make sense because I'm an athlete and have been for my whole life. So if I'm going to do calisthenics or move and groove, that's performed in the dojo. That's informed in the living room when you start wrestling with your friends and moving and grooving. So the stretching and all that happens in the gym, but it happens in the exercise. The calisthenics take place outside of it in some kind of athletic form. Um, and then the secondary thing is, for some reason, here's the biggest part. Uh, society thinks if you don't do something, you can't do something. And I'm trying to tell you guys, the reason why you don't want to do cardio all year is because you're already pretty darn healthy if you're training, sleeping, and eating right. And then use the cardio when you need to get ready for a show. So same thing for athletics, unless you're just not athletic. Um, and I was athletic from day one. So for me, it's something that's already there and we can repeat it in a split second. Um, so that's why for me, it's just irrelevant. And also the upside of doing a hundred pushups, you hit it on the nail. Good job. You guys will learn as you guys learn more about health and fitness. There's a point where you're training muscle, right? And you also want the benefit, the side effects of healthier body, stronger body. And when you guys start hitting those 20s and 30 reps, that's deterioration and complete fatigue. Or if you do 100 push-ups, and then it's just wear and tear on your ligaments. And that's something I just don't think you guys understand. Um, and But you will with age if that's the kind of thing you kind of go to all the time. <clears throat> so I'm looking for the most stress with the least amount of damage. So that's a huge thing for me. And that's, again, longevity. Next. And thank you for the donation to the dogs. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray, Ray. Good question, though. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a link on here right now. It is the Titan crew. Uh, it's michaelhearn.com. Just go to michaelhearn.com. Pick your workout program that you want to get going on. On there, you're going to go over and get your meal plan. Okay, right on to Titan meal plans. That way, give me 24 hours or 48 hours to go over your whole eating process and question and answers. I'll shoot you back a nutrition plan for you to start. Start the workout, start the nutrition. That way you can still be brain dead. You don't know where to go. Don't worry about it. I got you. I got you to start. You're gonna get a passcode. That passcode is gonna lead you and enter you into the Titan crew. And so I'll be on there at times and we get to talk about what your nutrition and how it's helping you. Um, and if I have to fine tune it, we're gonna talk about the training and what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. And the great thing about it is you're gonna be around thousands of people that are doing the same kind of motivation you're doing in their training, maybe be on different programs, maybe different goals, but everybody passionate about their health and fitness like you are now. So that's gonna get you in there. We're gonna talk face-to-face, -face, get you rocking and rolling, and you'll be one of the new Titans over in Perry. Man, thanks for, thanks for coming on at this last moment and doing this with me. That was fun. There's an hour of cardio, slicing and dicing. It's what I call an upper chest. You guys have a great day, and I will see you again Monday morning to get back to everybody about their Titans program. Talk to you.